Coming up in just a minute, Jason Anderson of the Sacramento Bee to talk about last night's game. Also to talk about the question he had for De'Ara Fox on the post-game show. I got a couple of TVs going, watching NBA basketball right now, and the Sixers are up big, up 12 on the Clippers as James Harden just knocked down a three and got fouled. And I think they're going to look at this one as well. But tonight, we're all rooting for the Sixers, I would imagine, because I still think the Kings have an outside chance at catching the Clippers and maybe even getting that six or five seed in the Western Conference. All right, last night the Kings took a, a rough loss, man. I, I just mean rough loss last night to the Dallas Mavericks, 132 to 96. De'Aaron Fox had 18 points in that game, five rebounds and three assists. But nobody really talking about his play today. They're talking about his answer to a Jason Anderson question. Jay, do we have the question too, or is it just the answer? Because I, I need to set this up. Darren Fox went to the podium post game and uh, met with reporters. And here's the uh, question and answer from Jason Anderson and Darren Fox. This is after last night's loss to the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, Darren, we've uh, for quite a while now. You've come out and and you know addressed like some of your bigger and and you know maybe more difficult losses. Is this like something you're kind of making a point of doing um, for for some reason in turn you know just leading? this team and, and kind of showing that accountability. And, and as far all. as talking to y'all. Yeah. Just, you I don't know, get, I don't get shit out of that. Okay. I don't get nothing out of that. They asked me, I do it. But for the team, do you, is there, is, is it, so it really doesn't mean anything. In terms they don't, of they just, don't do a I come up here and talk. I'll tell you that, but no, nah, I mean, I, if Michael asked me, I, I did. If Michael or Shannon asked me, I, I do it. Okay. Well, they're yeah. Good. I get no joy in this after a win or a loss. Uh, my team doesn't care if I come up here in a blowout win or a blowout loss. So, Sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Wow. Wow. That's De'Aaron Fox after the game. And here's what I'll say about De'Aaron Fox in, in that whole situation. Fox was a little spicy with the, that answer. I don't know if he would have reacted the same way had they won the game, but he was clearly a little spicy. Maybe didn't like the question, but he was being honest and he was being truthful. And I'm, a, I'm, a okay with that. I always say, be who you are. And if people don't like it, oh, well, but at least you're being who you are. And so let's get Jason Anderson on the phone right now. He writes for the Sax B. He's the sports editor there. Jason, you're my guy. Thanks for coming on the drive, guys. Anytime, Drapes. What's up, buddy? You, you tell me, man. I know it was a <laughs> tough loss last night. Uh, not the way Kings fans wanted to see their team respond. Luca comes in. You know, is smiling, chumming it up with the officials, laughing. Kyrie is hitting three after three. Before we get into the question you asked uh, De'Aaron Fox, what did you make of last night's game, and how disappointing was it, was that for the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, I mean, it was disappointing uh, for the Kings that they had. Um, you know, I think that the big thing last night was it, it was a, you know, it, it was a it was a big step back defensively uh, for them. They've been so good. Uh, in recent weeks, in March, in fact, uh, going into last night's game, they were fourth in the NBA in defensive rating, uh, which is just an incredible uh, feat for this team, given where they came from and, and you know, Mike's efforts to, to coach them up on that end of the floor. Uh, their their three-point defense, which has been down like 28, 29, 30th in the league, uh, was 13th um, over the last, you know, like, like since the, the start of March. Uh, so that's one area that he has really had to work hard um, in terms of like coaching the, the closeout techniques that they like to use. Um, and, and, you know, they, <clears throat> this team lacks a little bit of um, size, length, athleticism, and some of those like, like wing spots and, and getting out to contest threes, which makes it uh, tech, which makes the technique really important. And so these guys really have to stay locked in and focused on, on the techniques that, that, you know, the coaches are asking them to, to you know, to use and, and um, you know, go about defending the three-point line that way. And I think last night they, there was just some slippage there, which happens from time to time. Um, but, but, you know, I think all in all, um, everybody, you know, has been really encouraged <clears throat> with the way they've been defending recently. And, and you know, I think they can, they can get back to that, um, you know, going forward, hopefully uh, for them starting on Friday. You know, Jason, when I look at this Mavericks team, this is a different Mavericks team than we saw earlier in the season. I mean, the, their length that they now have, you know, I, I looked it up. Derek Jones Jr. wingspan, 
seven feet. Dante Exum, he's six five, but he's a six nine uh, wingspan. PJ Washington, seven two and a half. Daniel Gafford, seven two point two five inch wingspan. Derek yeah. Lively, seven eight. Do we need to take this Mavericks team seriously as a threat in the Western Conference, as a threat to our hopes of a top six seed going into Friday? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, you do. I mean, <clears throat> they're in the six seed right now, and and you know, and and the, the you didn't mention Luka Doncic and, and Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Um. So you know, any team with those two guys, you've got to take seriously, and they've they've done a nice job of of putting some pieces around them that have, have taken them to another level. So yeah, they're right in the mix. I would expect it to be probably Dallas and Sacramento fighting it out for that six seed with with Phoenix kind of on the outside uh, looking in, in my opinion. Have you looked at the last 10 games, and what do you think the Kings need to go over these final 10? Me and Jay were talking. We said at worst six and four, ideally seven and three over these last 10 to get a top six seed. You know, I have not, um, and, and, and I haven't compared it to, you know, to, to Dallas and Phoenix's last 10 either. I, I do know that the Kings have, um, at least that last check, which was a week or so ago, they still had one of the tougher remaining schedules. Yeah. Third uh, toughest. Phoenix, yep. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is now? Yeah, third toughest now, yeah. Well, Phoenix was way up there, too, last I checked. I don't know where they're at They're at number but, one now. Okay, yeah. so, yeah. And, and so I've been saying for a while, I think the Kings are going to, going to end up ahead of Phoenix and, and, you know, Dallas is, is surging a little bit. And then so now, you know, we'll see it's a little bit of a horse race. I don't know exactly what it's going to take, but it, it is pretty clear. It's going to, in my mind, it's going to come down to those teams. Rocking with Jason Anderson, sports editor of the SAG B and of course, SAG B, the Sacramento Kings uh, beat writer, Jason, before, of course, we talk about the De'Aaron Fox question and all that. I want to ask, and this is something I asked Drapes and Whitey yesterday. What is the end all be all for this season? And I know we're looking ahead, but what would you be okay with? A first round exit? Would would a failure be losing in the play in? What are you looking for that you would think would be deemed successful? No, I mean successful. Like you 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 have to get to the play. They want to get to the playoffs, right? I mean, like that that's that's success. You got there last year. You need to at least get back there this year. You know, every year is different, right? So we knew that this team could be the same as it was last year. It could even maybe be a little better and not necessarily finish as well in the standings or win as many games because other teams are going to get better as well. And then, you know, they've had better health, like some of the teams um, from last year that, that really kind of didn't meet expectations. Um, those teams were, were really hurt and, and not, um, you know, they had a lot of their stars miss games. And, and so this year has been, you know, kind of a different animal and, and we always knew that was possible. Uh, so, you know, but, but look, you don't want to regress. You want to get to the, the first round at least. Um, I think for Mike and the guys, they want to win um, and, and advance in the playoffs. I think ultimately that would be what they would probably define as success. But we, you know, we know that uh, teams have journeys and, and, you know, and, and sometimes you have to, Mike always talks about adversity and, and kind of learning from those experiences. And, you know, that, that may be what this year ends up being is, is maybe they get back to the first round. Maybe they, you know, maybe they win, maybe they don't. Um, but really for me, I just want, I, I think success, um, if I really had to say, like, this, this, getting better defensively is, is a huge step for this group. And, and we don't know what the group's going to look like going forward. But, you know, as Mike has, has said many times, like you don't win championships, you don't make deep playoff runs if you can't be good defensively. And and so for them to kind of make these strides that they seem to be making recently, um, that to me is already like a, a big big step in the right direction. Jason Anderson, sports editor of the Sac B, joining us here on the Drive Guys Sac Town Sports eleven forty. Jason, you know what can you tell us about this Sasha Vazankov situation? I mean, the dude's been questionable for a couple of weeks. I thought he'd be back by now. I know he's been practicing. He's been warming up. Like, what can you tell us about Sasha and how desperately could they use him right now with Trey Lyles out, with Kevin Herter out? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's been a little bit unusual. Um, he's been listed as questionable for, I think, five games now. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you don't normally see that. You might see it, you know, one or two or three games. And then, and then you know, usually... Um, at that point they're, they're back. Um, but 
Yes, it's it's dragged on a little bit, and I, I you know I can't really say I know a whole lot about it. We haven't talked to Sasha um, recently because when guys are hurt and, and out, like there you know there are no like media obligations or anything for them uh, when when they're not active. So we, we really I don't know anything firsthand from Sasha. I've I've, uh, I've talked to them uh, or I've talked to him kind of on occasion, and and you know and he just kind of gives me, you know, responses like, yeah, I'm getting better. We're working on it and, and stuff like that. But yeah, they could use him. Their power forward depth is, uh, is being tested right now. Um, really, I think they, they need Trey back. Like uh, when, if and when Trey gets back out there, I really think he's going to, he's going to help the group. Um, Sasha, you know, we'll see like how good a shape he's in, like what he, he can do like, but, but Trey is kind of the guy I really think can, can um, definitely help him uh, when, when he gets back on the floor. Jason, something that uh, Drapes has, uh, he's been leaning on. He, he's been hes been politicking. You know, we're in the year of the politics, 2024, Jason. He's been politicking <laughs> that De'Aaron and, and Keon has the potential. And correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, Drapes, I'm using the proper word, the potential to be the best defensive backcourt in the NBA. Ooh. What says Jason Anderson? <laughs> wow. Potential. Well, uh, I said potential. Yeah, I mean, I see where you're. I see where you're coming from. I'll say that. Um, like Keon is is. Uh, you don't have to lie been... to him, Jason, real quick. Because look, <laughs> look, I know Drapes is your guy, and he's and you're no, his guy. He was trying to answer the question. No, let because him the you question. put your hands in the air, so that let me know you've had this conversation <laughs> Not or something. At all. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'm a, I'm gonna remove myself, right, Jason. What's your answer? Okay. Well, I I uh, you know I don't I whether they can be the best defensive backcourt in the league, I don't know, but I do think. They can be a very, very good backcourt. I think they already are. I mean, Aaron is what one or, or one and two in the league in, in just uh, steals and deflections, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, and Keon is outstanding defensively. He's um, you talk about length and wingspans. Like he's he's a he's a big time wingspan guy with good athleticism and quickness and hands and like all these things. And so. Really, Keon has been a huge, huge part of, of their defense, uh, you know, kind of going to another level. And, and they went from, I don't know, like, uh, I guess the best way to put it is, you know, now you've got you've got Domas, who's the best rebounder in the league, and you've got Fox, Keon, and Keegan, who are all, I, I would say, plus perimeter defenders. And this is a huge credit to Fox, because this is not where he started. Like, he was not a great defender his first couple of years in the league. He always had that potential. Um, but this was a team that just gave up straight line drive after straight line drive for, for years and, and no matter who was on the team. <clears throat> and so for Fox to get to this point where, you know, he's showing us what he's, he can do defensively, it, you know, they're at a point now where they've got three really good perimeter defenders and the best rebounder probably in the league. Um, and that has, uh, <clears throat> I think that's why we're seeing their, their defense, uh, you know, take another step and uh, Fox and Keon being back there. Uh, plus Keegan and the strides he's made this year are, are a huge part of that. Jason Anderson joining us of the SAC B. Uh, Jason, let's get to the question you asked De'Aaron Fox last night. We played it uh, coming back from commercial just now. What led to that line of questioning? What were you trying to get at with that, my guy? Yeah, you know what? It was <clears throat> honestly, it was meant as a compliment. And this is something I've been uh, kind of had in my mind for a while now because ever everybody's going to remember the, the, the period of time where he wasn't speaking to the media. Okay. And that all stemmed from one night where he didn't come out. They actually put Keon on the podium. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, Keon, who I think was still on a two way contract at the time and they bring Keon out to answer for a, a really bad uh, loss. And, you know, there were questions, you know, in the media, like I didn't make a big deal about it personally, but there were questions about the team's leadership and accountability that night. And, um, you know, I think Fox took that a certain way because as it turned out, like the, the team had not even asked him to come out and address the media. It wasn't like he said no. Mm. And so I think his, his, you know, 16 day, like media silence at that time really stemmed from like, it wasn't necessarily frustrations with us in the media. It was just the situation where like he was sort of being criticized, um, you know, maybe unfairly when he hadn't even been asked to come out and, and, and speak. So he, you know, ever since then, I've noticed after pretty much every loss, certainly the bad ones or the difficult ones, like Fox is out there front and center. He's answering the questions. He's standing up for his team. 
and I've been impressed by that. Like that, I, I <clears throat> maybe I should have prefaced the whole question that way by telling him, look, this is you know, don't take this the wrong way. Um, but right. but you know, I think he look, he tried. I think he took the the opening to steer. Like his response was that if I'm asked, I'm going to come out and and do this, whether I you know like to do it or don't like to do it. <clears throat> he said, if I'm asked. I'll come out. And, and that's, so that's, he took it that way. And with some colorful language, it was kind of a really in the room. It was kind of a funny, like everybody's laughing and smiling about it. Like it wasn't anything, you know, things take on a life of their own on social media. And and, then, you know, but it, I didn't think it was really contentious. I didn't have any problem with his answer. Like, I do think he has demonstrated leadership and I thought he might want to like talk about that or get into that uh, just because of the way he is, kind of leading this team. Um, another example of that is the way he has bought into what Mike wants to do on defense. Um, he's been one of the main guys <clears throat> as offensive as, as Fox is, he's been one of the main guys like really echoing Mike's thoughts about defense. So I've been personally impressed with Darren's leadership and, and um, I thought he might, you know, take the conversation that way when I posed the question. Um, maybe I could have, could have worded it differently. Um, but, but I, you know, I'm not trying to steer anybody in any, he can answer that question in any way he wants. And he chose to, you know, make the point that, look, if I'm asked, I'm going to come out. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm fine with that. There it is right there. And, and, and exactly. And, and because you asked the question, now we know uh, we can go back to January. If the Aaron Fox, yeah. not at the podium, he probably wasn't asked to come out, you know, he was and, not, right. We know that for it, a fact. It, and it, that's what that was. Exactly. Appreciate it, Jason, man. Thanks for clearing that up. And like you said, once things get on social media, they can sort of take a, a on a life of its own. I'm glad we got you on here to just set the record straight. Appreciate you. We'll see you Friday at the game, man. Yes, sir. Anytime. You guys be good. All right. Jason Anderson, sports editor at the Sacramento Bee, jumping on the drive, guys. Final half hour coming up.